Okay, let's take a look at this second article here now and uh, see if we can't sort of dissect this one as well. You'll notice this is another article from Educational Administration Quarterly, which is the UCEAs or the University Council for Educational Administrations, um, one of their main journals. Um, so, and again, if you remember from when we talked about this in class, this is one of those that have a structured abstract. So it's not the free ability that the authors would have to write whatever they want. They've got to do a particular flow. So the first thing I'd like you to do, if you haven't had a chance to read One Size Does Not Fit All, Differentiating uh, Leadership to Support Teachers in School Reform, the first thing I'd like you to do is to pause uh, this video and go back and take a look at the PDF or print it out and take a quick read through and by quick I mean take about 10 or 20 minutes um, 10 or 15 minutes to read through this in a little bit more detailed fashion than what we would if you were just perusing it to determine whether or not it was going to be useful so I'll pause for a minute here and let you go and do that okay so assuming that you've gone and read this now uh, let's take a quick look. So as we've done with the other ones, we're going to start with the abstract, and I'm going to read through the abstract in a fairly detailed way, although keeping in mind that this is an example of one of those where the authors don't have complete authority to do what they want. This is one where the authors have to focus upon some specific things. If you remember from EAQ, essentially those specific things are the purpose, the research design, the findings and the conclusions. So you can see each of those are included in this particular abstract. What we are going to do next is we are going to scroll down through and get to the conclusion and we're going to basically again use that to determine whether or not this is an article that is of interest to us that is potentially useful for us for the purposes of our own literature review so scrolling down conclusions and implications are down here on page 124 so you'll again you'll see like the other EAQ one that we read they start off by giving you a summary so they go through and say you know in summary this is kinda of what we found then you'll see they use this second paragraph here to provide some advice for practitioners although they're still touching a little bit on their findings in this one as well and then in this last one you'll see that for the most part they're still focused mainly upon looking at what this means for teacher leaders or for school leaders um, not really giving us much in the way of suggestions for future research one of the things to note in here unlike some of the other ones is you can see that their group interview protocol or focus group slash interview protocol is actually included as appendix A and then their individual teacher interview protocol is included as appendix B um, and then they've got a principal interview protocol there as appendix C um, and then you can sort of see their full list of data that they used here in appendix D so the reason I pointed out those appendices, not necessarily because they are particularly useful in terms of reviewing this, but it provides a level of detail about how the authors went about doing this particular study. And if this happened to be a study that was of particular interest to you, you now have the specific instruments that were used to conduct this study. So I'm moving back here now, and I'm going to go, and we're going to take a look a little look at the... Uh, the literature review to see exactly the kind of format that it follows um, using it again as a sample for what you guys might find in terms of your own um, literature review and how you might go about doing that so the first thing to note is once I get to the introduction they do actually include a fair amount of literature in their introduction um, not saying that you shouldn't do that and in fact when we get to um, the chapter one portion of our thesis, which is where our introduction is, you'll also have a 
section that has a little bit of literature in there and then also has a little bit of you know personal element in there which is what you see here in this paragraph um, one of the differences and one of the reasons why I chose this article as opposed to some of the others is that unlike the other ones that we've looked at in previous weeks or this week instead of having a literature review you'll notice that they have a theoretical framework now it's not uncommon for authors to instead of having a literature review to have a conceptual or theoretical framework essentially what they're looking at here is they are using this particular framework that they are describing in great detail as a way of situating and essentially analyzing the study that they're doing um, you know so they are basically going through and there's this um, idea of differentiated leadership as you can see here and they're using different conceptual and theoretical ideas to essentially develop this notion of differentiated leadership and how it looks and and how it works and this is essentially the lens in which they are conducting their study so you'll note it does have some consistencies with what we would see in a traditional literature review for example they're talking about themes now the themes that they're talking about are essentially the different aspects of this differentiated leadership here so you'll see things like transformative leadership and zones of enactment and social sense making and distributed leadership and individual sense making throughout the um, you know the the theoretical framework that we've got here and you can almost think of these as individual topics or individual themes and when you read through them you will see that they tend to develop them in much the same way that you would develop a literature review now one of the biggest differences that you'll note is they don't use as much literature in supporting these topics or themes the other thing that you'll notice is that they spend a lot more time talking about individual pieces of literature when you look at a theoretical framework than they do talking about themes in the literature. So that idea of integrated writing, um, you don't see as much of that in a theoretical or conceptual framework. So that's one of the main differences that you'll note. And while the vast majority of items that you read as you start reviewing your literature will have literature reviews there will be some that do have these conceptual or theoretical frameworks so it's important to know exactly what it is and how it differs from a traditional literature review so moving into the methodology now you'll note that they cut this up a lot compared to um, the last one that we looked at where uh, there wasn't a lot of subsections in there and it was mainly sort of a narrative description of what they did you'll see in this one that the authors cut it up a fair amount in terms of what they do and they start with a discussion of the sample now by sample they mean the people uh, that participated in the study so one of the things to look at as you notice right off the bat is they mention that they're using a case study design and they cite somebody to support that now they don't tell us the sampling procedure you'll know you know we don't know if this was a convenient sample or a purposeful sample um, you know this was basically a school that they chose and the teachers and leaders in that particular school and they go through and describe you know the school and the different people involved in the school um, you know in a fair amount of detail here but at no point do I see anywhere where they basically say that you know this was a purposeful sample it was a convenient sample it was um, you know just a random sample did they just pick the school at a random um, you know there's nothing in the methodology section that tells us this now they get into the data collection here so you'll see they talk about you know observations they have um, they'll mention interviews here um, they have uh, focus groups here um, you know so you can see some of the different ways in which they're collecting data they do have you know a citation or two in here that should help you at least determine what it is they're doing but not a lot I mean that one citation they've got in there um, focuses mainly upon um, why they selected the group that they selected as opposed to 
you know, why interviews were appropriate or the type of interview that they were using. Um, you know, so it's important to notice that. Now, they do go through in here in this, you know, when I get into 105, and they give me a fair amount of detail about what those observations and interviews and focus groups look like. And this is also, you'll note, where they start to reference the appendices where you can find copies of the interview protocols that they were using. And then they talk a little bit more here about, you know, the observations that they were doing with the principal. But again, you'll notice not a lot of citations in here. So not a lot of sort of help in terms of how they were going about this. Now, when we get to the data analysis, um, unlike the last article where we looked at where there were actually a couple of citations about, you know, they were doing this kind of method and that kind of method of data collection, but they didn't really tell us about the data analysis. Right here in the very first sentence of data analysis, they tell us they use grounded theory to interpret the data. And they give us a citation here as to who they were using to inform that. So, and then they go through and talk about what is grounded theory, you know, and how did we go about it? So you can see it's a line by line ana analysis. They did some open coding of the transcribed data. Um, you know, that open coding was done through an inductive coding scheme. You know, and they worked their way through and sort of talk about how they went about it. You can see they're comparing their individual themes for data reduction, and they've got another citation here, Miles and Huberman, which is one that um, when you get to 690, you'll become a little bit more familiar with. Um, there were two rounds, apparently, of data analysis, and you can see here's some of the other things that they were looking at when they were going through that second round, and again, we see the citations that they used to support that. So, you know, once I, as I'm getting here now to the end of my methodology section, again, looking at this study in terms of determining is it a good piece of research, I can say that, you know, they provided... Uh, me with what the methodology was. They told me with what the data collection methods were. They told me the methods of data analysis. For the methodology and the methods of data analysis, they provided citation support for it. They didn't do it for the methods of data collection. They never did tell me the sampling technique or the sampling procedure, but they did spend a great deal of time talking about um, the sample itself and giving me a lot of detail about the sample, much more so than the previous article we looked at did. Um, they don't mention anything about reliability and validity in here or things, techniques that they used to ensure reliability and validity. So that would be something that, you know, again, would make me question the process that they went through. Um, you know, so again, like the other one, this would be something that I would say is an average or above average piece of research uh, based upon you know, what I've read in the methodology. I can't say that it's a great piece of research because while it probably gives me a little bit more detail than the previous one, and I would probably have a slightly easier job of replicating a study like this than I would the previous one that we reviewed, there are still aspects of this that are kind of like a black hole for me that, you know, if I were trying to replicate this study, that um, there's no guarantee that I would do it with any level of fidelity that the authors wanted me to do in certain areas because I don't necessarily know how they went about it because they didn't tell me anything about it. Um, you know, so here's another example of how you can sort of, you know, pick apart um, from a research design perspective or from a methodological um, screening as to whether or not an article that you're reviewing for your own research, uh, for your own literature review, is going to be useful for you and something that, you know, you should place a great deal of weight and credibility in or whether or not you might have questions about.